live from Pompano Park in Pompano Beach, Florida. It's a three-hour harness racing extravaganza. The Certified Vacations Breeders' Crown. The finest racehorses from North America and Europe have assembled at this lightning-fast oval to challenge for supremacy in the standard bred sport and to chase over $2 million. The most prestigious night of harness racing for 1990 is just ahead. Since its inception in 1984, the Breeders' Crown has provided standard bred racing with a benchmark for greatness. The event brings together North America's finest racehorses and is the deciding factor in Harness Horse of the Year. The three-year-old trotting filly Fancy Crown started the trend of winning the Breeders' Crown and then the sport's highest honor. After defeating her male counterparts in the Kentucky Futurity, she crushed the field of her own sex in capturing the Breeders' Crown at Rosecroft. The richest pacer in history, the powerful Nihilator, capped a brilliant career with a victory as a three-year-old in the Breeders' Crown. With Bill O'Donnell at the controls, the sensational sophomore emerged from his sire's shadows and atoned for a second-place finish the year before. The mighty Niatros would have been proud. In 1986, four-year-old Forrest Skipper was at the pinnacle of his game. He set world records, won a match race, and went undefeated. And Forrest Skipper leads the way by two lengths. Broadway Express toward the rail, tries to hold second. Here comes between horses, lustrous big guy and dignitarian, but it's Forrest Skipper in front. Forrest Skipper takes the Breeders' Crown. Maclo Bell dominated the sport like no other trotter in the 80s and broke a 19-year-old world record in the 88 crown. A year ago, Matt Scooter won Harness Racing's most cherished prize. It took a sensational win against a star-studded field to earn it. The shell a chance as Matt Scooter under drive, and here comes Cantastic in the final yards, proud side, running made low bell. It's Matt Scooter leading the way, scoring easily by three. Check the teletimer, 153 and two and the statistics are simple. In the six years of the prestigious competition, the Horse of the Year has always captured a Breeders' Crown event on the road to the top. And if form holds true this year, Beach Towel will follow in this great tradition. Yes, it all comes down to the Breeders' Crown, and it's coming up next. It is a windy November night on Florida's Gold Coast as we present the Certified Vacations Breeders' Crown. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. Welcome to Harness Racing's equivalent to the Super Bowl. It's called the Breeders' Crown. This is the seventh year of this prestigious event, and there's reason to believe that seven is better. Tonight, we'll have seven live races for you. And overall, there will be 67 trotters and pacers who are vying for divisional honors. Let's take a look at our live race menu for tonight. We begin with older horses. First, it's the horse trot, then the mare trot, highlighted by Peace Corps, followed by sophomore Colts in one of the night's most competitive races. Then we change the table setting and feature pacers in races 6 through 10. Indeed, the main course will be the three-year-old Colt pace as Beach Towel looks to solidify Horse of the Year honors. The overall purse tonight is plentiful with $2.3 million up for grabs. Joining me on tonight's broadcast, my partner, Gary Seibel. And Gary, what makes the Breeders' Crown so special? Well, Bruce, tonight is special for a lot of reasons. First of all, it obviously brings together the best trotters and pacers in the sport of harness racing in 1990, and it gives them a definitive year-end seasonal championship forum. 
Divisional titles are indeed on the line tonight in just about all the categories you'll see and possibly even Horse of the Year honors. Secondly, it's a chance for the sport to showcase its stars of 1990 in front of a national television audience. It, go it gives the viewing public a chance to see a sport that indeed has its grassroots beginning in America and also a chance to see that this sport is alive and well and trotting and pacing its way into the 1990s, Bruce. There are so many fine fillies and colts on tonight's card, but Gary, give us a focus. Who are the real standouts? Well, the first name that comes to mind, Bruce, is Peace Corps. This is uh, probably the greatest trotting filly of all time. She is a millionaire. She's making her much-anticipated return to the United States for her third Breeders' Crown Championship. Then, of course, there is her counterpart in the pacing ranks, the Philly Town Pro. She is simply splendid, and she, indeed, could become a millionaire tonight. And then, of course, we've got to throw in the towel, Beach Dowell, that is. He's done just about everything that's been asked of him. And, of course, he is going to be a likely Horse of the Year candidate without question. We are just moments away from tonight's fourth race, which you will be seeing live. It's called the Horse Trot, and no sex, please, is the favorite. Well, no sex, please. Very impressive in a tune-up race here at Pompano. Harness track uh, going gate to wire, looking very strong in this field. He, too, uh, a millionaire, and he is a Canadian-bred horse, and now uh, there's more competition for him, though. And what about the Fs? Friendly face of Finland. Well, I'll let you say that one, Bruce, the three Fs there. But uh, friendly face, of course, a little bit of a, an unknown factor here. He has raced well in Europe this season. He's won over $300,000 Euro dollars. I'm not quite sure what that amounts to, but uh, he's a bit of an unknown factor. Here's a look at the odds for the horse and gelding trot, the fourth race on tonight's card. And as you can see, Keystone Sheik was scratched, and no sex, please, is the overwhelming favorite right now at two to five. More of the Breeders' Crown in just a moment. Welcome back to Pompano Park for the Breeders' Crown. Right now, we'd like to introduce you to the rest of our broadcast team. And first, we go to the man who called all the Breeders' Cup action at Belmont Park last week. Let's go up to track announcer Tom Durkin. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, this is my first Breeders' Crown. I've had the opportunity over the years to call eight Hamiltonians, the Meadowlands Pace eight times, the Woodrow Wilson, about $20 million harness races. But I've never had the anticipation that I have tonight with this first Breeders' Crown. Eight championship events compressed into a three-hour time period. It's going to be a great night and one that I'm really looking forward to. Now, from this race caller to another race caller, and he was a pretty good one at that, Stan Bergstein. Thanks, Tom Durkin. Looking forward to your brilliant calls again tonight. Horse racing is preoccupied with winners, and uh, tonight we're emphasizing the best of the best. But there are many interesting and great stories that don't occur in Victory Lane, and we'll be bringing them to you here on this Night of Champions. Right now, however, let's go to the man who is in Victory Lane. We'll be talking to the winners, Publicity Director of the United States Trotting Association, John Pavlik. Thank you, Stan, and it's here in the winner's circle in the infield. We'll talk to the people that make the headlines. Even more headlines will be written back in the paddock. That's where the next member of our crew is going to be. But right now, there are trotters moving in behind the starting gate, so let's go back to Bruce Beck. Thank you very much, John. The horse and gelding trot, the fourth race. The first race you'll be seeing live tonight on ESPN, ready to go. There are seven behind the gate. And here's a look at the odds. Keystone Cheek has been scratched. No sex, please. Leaving for post six. Two to five favorite. Delray Lobel, seven to two. Here's track That's announcer, Tom one of the Turkin. finest in North America, Tom Turkin. Field in behind the gate, and no sex, please. Is favored here. The odds board reads two to five as the tempo quickens as we near the start of the race. And uh, they're off. And uh, down on the uh, inside now, going for the lead. There goes friendly faces on quickly now to take command early on the far outside. No sex, please. Looking for the early lead. No sex, please. On the outside now, up to take a short lead. Friendly faces battling it out with them early. And the battle is joined as they approach the quarter mile mark. Just in behind them, Lode Startle Bell is now third by three. Bolt Herbert is racing in fourth position. By the back, it's Del Rey, Low Bell, and Slybo Hanover. First quarter, 27 and two fifth seconds. And it was a tough opening quarter for the favorite here. No sex, please. Who leads us now? Past the stands the first time, showing the way. Friendly face right there, racing second. Lode Startle.
Michael Valdez eager, and Mickey McDaniel will try to settle him down. Gold Herbert is now racing in fourth position. John Campbell is unhurried with Del Ray Lobel, who has one horse beaten, and that is Flyball Hanover. Around the turn, and they hit the half in a grueling 56 and three-fifths seconds. No sex, please. Still holding the lead. Friendly face is second, and Gold Herbert now is first out. There goes Gold Herbert moving up on the outside, now to be third. For the inside, it's both Sarlo Bell now back racing in fourth position. Campbell has a firm hold of Del Rey Lobel, who comes off and moves up with cover on the outside, and Slyball Hanover trails the field around the fire turn. No sex, please. Push to three quarters in 126 and three. Hold Herbert coming after him now as they move toward the top of the stretch. Then just in behind, it's friendly face right there. Del Rey Lobel comes off cover with a three wide sweep, and they still have to catch No Sex Please. Ron Whipples puts him to an all out drive, and No Sex Please is race funding. He's holding on by two and goes on to a sharp victory here in the finish town. And the time, 155 flat. Sensational. A new Breeders' Crown record, and he destroyed it. 155 flat. A brilliant race here for No Sex Please and driver Ron Whipples. So no sex, please, shatters the Pompano track record by a full two and a half seconds and also shatters the Breeders' Crown record. A tremendous year for no sex, please, his 18th win. Well, Bruce, it was a tremendous uh, race, and it has been a tremendous year for no sex, please. And uh, luckily, Ron Waples able to get some... Uh, Breathing time for No Sex Please in those middle fractions going 59 and 1 in those middle fractions. That opening quarter could have taken the sting out of him, but he managed to hold on. was extremely game, and of course, no Keystone Chic uh, to contend with there. So No Sex Please, uh, this year's Breeders' Crown champion, and uh, a superb effort by this gelding and by Ron Waples. Just rating him right. This horse is owned by Ron Waples Jr., driven to victory tonight by Ron Waples Sr. No sex, please, wins the horse and gelding truck. No sex, please, was scratched out of this race last year. And no sex, please, the fastest age gelding in history. Set a mark of 155 at Lexington, breaking Indianapolis record. And again tonight, the time 155 flat. Tremendous year for No Sex Please, and this is the first Canadian bred, the first Canadian sired horse to win the Breeders' Crown. Well, Bruce, as you say, uh, uh, an absolutely ex extremely fine performance by No Sex Please. Right now, let's go to John Pavlock. Thank you very much with a very happy Ron Waples. Last year, the winner with a long shot, Delphi's Lovell here, a two to five favorite. He was tremendous, Ronnie, right from the get-go. Yeah, he's been tremendous all his life, this horse, just unbelievable. Now, in the race itself, you were on the outside and really uh, had to get away a little bit just to determine, uh, just to keep, take control. Yeah, I didn't want to use him that much leaving the first quarter. They went the quarter in 27 seconds, but uh, there's lots of times things don't go the way you want, so you just have to do the best you can. And then a breather in the middle of the race. Uh, there were some challenges, but uh, you were sitting pretty uh, pretty good at the top. Yeah, the horse, he's much smarter than I am. He, uh, When he got to the front, he knew he'd kind of spun a little bit the first quarter, and he relaxed real good the middle half, and he just did what I wanted to. Among them, Del, Del Rey Lobel coming at the end. He won the uh, Breeders' Crown last year with a similar trip in behind Mac Lobel, and I'm sure you were hoping for no repeat of that for Del Rey. Yeah, that's for sure. I was kind of glad and I got the third quarter in where I did, and I was hoping I had enough to keep them off coming for home. Ronnie Waples, thank you. The horse owned and trained by Ron Waples, Jr. Back to you, Bruce. So the son of Briscoe Hanover, no sex please, returns 280, 220, and 210. Del Rey Lobel, who won this race a year ago, was second, 260, and 210. And Bold Herbert paid $2.10 to show time of the mile, 155 flat, which is a new world record for a five-year-old gelding on a 5 eighths mile track. 